Okay, thank you. Okay, as I first said, I mean, uh, uh, I am Jorge Rivera. We are involved in the Esper Erasmus Plus project. And we are working currently, we are working on the automatic and multilingual subtitling and dubbing of video lectures and also uh, textbooks. We are uh, a research group at the uh, uh, Universitat Politecnica de Valencia. And well, as Alfred said, we are, our task is to translate uh, these educational resources into multiple languages. So, so this introduction, just to, as you know, I mean, open educational resources are uh, growing rapidly, um, but they are not usually offered in multiple languages. So uh, the idea is to provide solutions, uh, cost-effective solutions that uh, allows us to translate these resources into multiple languages, for example, videos or textbooks, as it happens in, in the expert project. Uh, nowadays, I, I don't know if you're aware, but natural language processing technology is mature enough to, to generate uh, automatic multilingual uh, educational resources. We can translate these materials automatically, and we can uh, obtain high quality subtitles and translations, uh, even dubbing, uh, automatic dubbing, for these uh, resources with, with minimum lecturer involvement or effort. So I am just going to, to give you an overview of, of our experience on, 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 on providing multilingual uh, video lectures and also uh, textbooks over the last 10 years that we have been involved in, in, this, in, this, in this field. Just to mention a, a few words on natural language processing, just when I am talking about na natural language processing, I am talking about automatic speech recognition, that is to, in the case of videos, we are uh, obtaining the, the text, we are converting the speech from the, from the videos into text. And then we apply machine translation, is the second technology, machine translation to translate the text that we have generated from the automatic speech recognition process into another language. So we go from text to text into, into different languages. And finally, we can even go from text to speech in a, in a foreign language. This is a speech synthesis. Uh, um, this uh, natural language processing has uh, progressed uh, very significantly in the, over the last uh, 10 years uh, using this uh, machine learning technique or deep learning techniques based on neural networks. And also because we now have um, increased the parallel computing power using uh, the graphical, use, uh, graphical processing units that we have now in our, in our um, computers. Also, another reason to this, for this increase uh, in the quality of the transcription and the translation and also in, in the speech synthesis is the, the availability of large data sets that we can use to train our, our systems. So maybe you... I guess you, all of you have, have used, uh, at some time, have used Google Translate or have used uh, some applications to generate uh, the transcription for, for some videos. Okay, in, in our, our context, uh, as I said, we are, we, we are a, a research group at a public university, uh, Universidad Politécnica de Valencia. Uh, we have developed our own natural language processing technology uh, and we have transferred this, te this technology to, to public institutions mostly and also, also even to, to, to TV, TV, TV channels. So over the last 10 years we have been working on providing multilingual open educational resources. Uh, we started with, 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 with Euro several European projects. Uh, first was Trust Lectures, what Trust Lectures was the trans transcription and translation of, of large video repositories. Uh, with thousands of videos that we translate uh, into several languages. For example, in the case of translectures, we had videos in Slovene and English, and we translated into Spanish, French, German. Um, we did something similar in the in other project, like in the Emma project, in which we were translating uh, massive open online uh, courses. We were translating these MOOCs from uh, English or from French into, into English uh, and into other European languages. And we have been working on this also, for example, in SFIGON, uh, uh, generating um, translation for open edu educational resources. And now we are involved, as Alfred said, in the expert project, is the, the translation of, 
of uh, eye test books, also of video lectures, but we are also involved in other European projects. In the, for example, Interact Europe for the translation of training material for uh, oncology experts. So we, are, we have been uh, deeply involved in this, in the translation of educational resources over the last, over the last year. Even so, we have also been working been working on technology to transfer contracts with the, our local TV here in Valencia and also with the, with the European Center for Research on, on Nuclear Physics. We have a, also a contract with them, with them, but the idea is to translate, in this case, to translate the, the, the training material that they have, all the seminars, conferences that they have, to have them available uh, not only transcribe, but only, also translate it into, into, for example, from English into, into French. And also, our experience also comes from, from our UPB media services. UPB is recording uh, all their lessons uh, daily. Most of the, of the lessons are daily recorded, and also we generated a lot of video lectures. So all these videos are automatically uh, transcribed and translated, and even uh, lecturers have the possibility of generating dub tracks into other languages automatically if they if they um, want to do, to do so. So we have uh, experience on on this on this on this uh, training materials on the translation of these training materials. Well, for example, this this is a, an example of, um, of a video from the Esper project in, we, in which we have a, an Slovene video that was uh, transcribed first from, from into Slovene and then translated from Slovene into, into English. So in this case, the idea was to provide multilingual access to video lectures. In this case, we are providing uh, English subtitles for uh, an Slovene video that, that we have translated automatically. Um, but basically, the, the steps that we follow for, for providing this multilingual access in the case of videos, uh, in the case of text, is, is significantly easier because we just work on the translation of the text. But, but, but in the case of videos, uh, we follow three steps. We first uh, go from a speech to text. We generate automatic transcription of the, of the video in the source language. Then once we have the, 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 the transcription, the, the lecturer or the teacher has the possibility to, to correct these transcriptions. And when we have uh, a correct version of the transcription, we can generate automatic translate, translation into several languages. We can even translate the, the slides if, if needed. And finally, once we have the translation, the lecturer, if possible, they, they have the possibility of checking the, the translation. And then we can automatically dub and uh, generate or, or go from the text in, in a foreign language into the corresponding, corresponding dub, dub track in the, in the foreign language. So we have uh, an in, uh, integral translation of the, of the video lecture. So you can um, watch and listen to the video in, the, in your own mother tongue. Uh, that is more natural than reading the, the, the subtitles. Just to give you an overview of what, what I have explained, uh, what we have here is that uh, we have a new, for example, in the case of video lectures, we, we extract the, the audio uh, from the video. This audio goes to, to the speech to text process. We generate the transcription. But also when we generate the, when we are working on generating the transcription, we can take advantage of the information that the, the lecturer is providing the slides. So we can adapt our transcription system to the to the I mean, to the domain of the of the of the talk. So we can take into account what words are appearing in the slides. So the system is ready to recognize these words when the when the when the lecturer is speaking, and the transcription uh, obtained is of better quality, since the system is adapted to the to the domain. Then we we can at this step the lecturer can post edit. We generate the translation. Then text to text translation. We obtain the translation. The also the the teacher has the possibility of correcting this translation. And finally, we just generate the synthetic voice from the translation. Um, in this case, we also have the possibility of 
adapting. We indeed, I will explain later, we had the possibility of adapting the speech synthesis to the to the speaker. Uh, so we can dub the 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 voice of the of the original speaker in a foreign language. So we preserve the, the voice of the original speaker, but we transfer this voice into a different language. So it's the same speaker speaking in a different in a different in a different language. And with that, we can just uh, just generate the final video, uh, including the the new the new dub track in the in the corresponding foreign language. Well, I mean, uh, this is one of the of the uses that uh, that we have for 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 the for this technology. But of course, I mean, uh, when once we, you generate the transcription for a, a video repository, you are providing uh, a lot of functionality to this uh, repository. For example, you can, apart from the accessibility that you provide to the to the videos, to to for example, to he hearing impaired people. You can search. You can search. For example, you can search uh, clips in the in your video, uh, looking for a for a, for example for a given word. You are looking for all the video segments in which a given word appears. So you can search. You can you can search on on video repositories using uh, just keywords or just any word that is uttered in the in the video. Also, you can use it transcription for classification. You can also generate uh, summaries from for videos automatically uh, from the transcription. There are many, many functionalities that, that you can use. Also, you have the possibility, of course, of once you have the transcription to translate, and then you are providing access to non-native speakers to these videos. And finally, as I said, the, the, the possibility of, of dubbing is a uh, is uh, is giving in the first place it's giving uh, improved access accessibility of visually impaired people but also when you are following a, a course you don't need to be reading the subtitles you just can focus on the video content and you don't need to be reading all the time uh, the subtitles uh, that appear in the video so you can focus on the video content and don't and you don't have to be reading it's a bit it's a bit it's more natural to be hearing in your own own language the, the video that is uh, automatically done than being reading the subtitles if you are following for example a long course uh, well just a few words about the technology well just just to give you an overview of how it how is the current technology available when as, as i said all this technology, I just will say a few words. Uh, all this technology is using neural networks. It's the, the latest technology in machine learning that is giving very good results. But of course, you need to, to train these, these systems to with a lot of data. We are talking, for example, to train acoustic models. We are using thousands of hours of transcribed uh, videos or audio in general. Or also, you need to, to, to train language models with millions of sentences. But nowadays, um, the, the quality, the current quality of the transcription quality uh, is quite high. I mean, is is we are, we are using automatic evaluation measures to, to evaluate the quality of the transcription. We are using what, are, what is called word error rate, and it's the percentage of errors that you can find in the automatic transcription when you compare this transcription to the to a correct or a human reference transcription. So now error rates range between 10 and 20 and and, and, a, and a person uh, usually when you transcribe a video for the first time your error rate is between six and eight so the transcription quality is approaching to the to the human quality and for example at the upb we just publish the the transcription the automatic the automatic transcription directly without correcting them just for the, because we generate so many videos that we cannot be checking all these videos. So we just provide this automatic transcription so the students can uh, take advantage of this information. Of course, the lecturer had the possibility to correct this transcription. And then once we generate the translation from correct transcription, the translation quality is significantly better. Just for your information, just to give you know, an idea of the of the effort of correcting this, uh, this, transcription, this transcription, one hour of video takes 
now nowadays with this uh, latest technology three hours to be corrected approximately also depend on how uh, how careful you are uh, when you when you are checking these these transcriptions but that, that's basically uh, a thumb of fuel uh, for the for, for the positive effort for the correction effort for machine translation also here is the machine translation is the most difficult task uh, of of all these three uh, it's the more the more challenging uh, we as we say we use a lot of data in this case we use bilingual parallel sentences we use uh, millions of sentences in one language and the corresponding translation into another language but the, for this for this for the evaluation of this translation quality we use um, again automatic uh, measures that also give us an, over, an idea of what is the overlap between the automatic translation and the correct reference translation. This is uh, when we are talking about one single translation as a reference, it's a bit, a bit tricky because there are many possible translations for a, for a single short sentence. But in any case, we are using these automatic evaluation measures. And we, I, can, I, I can just inform you that nowadays, the translation quality, for example, when, when you go from English into German, French, or Spanish, this main mainstream languages uh, the translation quality that you can expect is uh, is close to high quality translation that means that you can even publish this translation automatically without checking them uh, there, there will be some errors but you can be quite sure that it, this translation can be understood by a, by a student in other languages like uh, for example from english into slovene uh, as we have fewer resources, it's more difficult to obtain such a good quality. But we are, is indeed we are working on that. In any case, uh, the lecturer has the possibility to correct this translation, and so we can generate uh, the a proper DAP track for the in the foreign in the foreign language. In this case, the possibility in effort is higher when you are checking the translation, and we are talking about one hour video takes ten hours to be um, corrected. Finally, yes, for speech synthesis, uh, well. We are using uh, clean speech to train these systems, but the naturalness of this of this technology now is 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 very good. It's just it's sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish uh, the synthetic voice from the human voice. So nowadays, I mean, as I will show you a demo later if I can, if I is possible. Um, we can do this for several languages. For German, English, Spanish, Italian, French, we have systems in different languages, and the quality is quite good. It's not; it's very far from this uh, robotic voice that you may heard in the past. And finally, the more the more interesting aspect is the possibility of cross-lingual voice cloning. What, what I said at the beginning, you we can dub um, a lecturer, but, but preserving the original voice of the speaker. So with that. Uh, as a lecturer in a, in a foreign language, but the essence of the of the of the of the speech of the of that lecturer is preserved. So it's the same voice in a foreign language. So it's like we're speaking in different languages, but uh, but it's your own voice. What what is very very nice. So, uh, this is the what is called cross-lingual voice cloning. And well, yes, I will just go very fast on this slide, uh, yeah, just to give you an overview of why uh, why we are still working on this technology when when we have very good mainstream uh, natural language processing providers. As you know, we have Google, Amazon, we have uh, Facebook is working on this. Well, one of the strong points in our technology is the possibility that we have to adapt to the domain this technology as we have developed our own technology we can adapt all our systems to to the to the domain that we are working on for example on the transcription or the translation we adapt our systems to to the to the specific vocabulary to the specific jargon of these of these video lectures so we obtain meta transcription and meta translation quality and even we can, as I said, we can adapt the, this technology to the acoustic condition. We can dub 
um, uh, a lecturer preserving uh, his or her own voice. And of course, uh, we can provide also meta support on minority, on minority languages like Slovenian, as we are doing in the expert project, as we we have been working on, on, on Slovenian for a long time, so we can provide better um, translation quality since we have devoted a lot of resources uh, to, to these languages and usually these mainstream providers focus on, on more mainstream languages like English, German, uh, Spanish. And also we have the possibility of uh, of the of deploying uh, on premises our uh, technology, so this is also an interesting point for privacy issues. Like hap it happens in the, for example, in the case of the of the European Center for uh, Research on, on Nuclear Physics. Yeah. Well, uh, finally, yes, I um, I, I would like to show you one demo. It's a, a video in Slovene from the Esper Espr project. The, 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 the original video is in, in Slovene, and you will hear to the voice in Slovene. I expect it can, I, I can share the, 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 the sound of my computer sound, my computer audio. And the idea is to, the, the video has been translated into English. So it's, it's translated and then that into, into English. So let me see if I can share, or if you can listen to my audio speech. Pozdravljeni. Poglejmo naslednji prikaz. V košare želimo razporediti 16 bombonov tako, da bo toliko košar, kot je bombonov v vsaki košari. Ker je 16 bombonov, izberemo najprej eno košaro, pa še eno in zdaj v vsako položimo dva. Seveda moramo dodati še eno. Spet vsako damo dva. Because we can see that there are enough candies, we add to every basket one candy and we add another basket. And in each basket can be added another candy. So we filled four baskets. And every time there are four candies. Why? Because 16 is four times four or because the square of four equals 16. Let's look at the area of a square that has 9 square units. What is the length of this side? We find that 9 is, of course, 3 squared because 3 times 3 is an area of a square. With a new computing operation, the square root, a length of a side of a square can be calculated. Okay. As, well, I guess, as you could see, I mean, uh, the... Um, the the, the system is mimicking the voice of the original speech, speaker and the naturalness of the the naturalness of the of the speech the synthetic speech now is has improved significantly i mean it's very difficult to distinguish that from a from a from a human voice Okay, if you are interested, uh, you could you could check this other. If you, could, if you are interested, you could check these other demos. These are uh, Spanish video lectures that are, have been dubbed into Catalan and English, and or you also have from English into different European languages. Okay, just a final slide on sorry, a final slide on future work. Yes, now what I have uh, been talking about as has been pre-recorded videos. The idea now is to go from pre-recorded videos to streaming videos. The idea is to be able to, to provide this, this technology, transcription, translation, and speech synthesis on, uh, on conferences like this. Indeed, we have already de developed a, 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 a Zoom integration for our technology to, to, to translate and that conferences like, like this one into multiple languages. And, the, and we are offering this, for example, to, to the third. Uh, well, finally, yes, we just are, are working on improving our adaptation techniques to the domain and also to the acoustic condition of the videos. And we are all, always open to enlarge the number of languages and domain coverage that we are uh, providing. So yeah, just this is, was my, my talk. I just wanted to give you yes, an, an overview of, of, of the current state of the art technology or natural language processing applied to, to, the, to educational resources.